on that note, I say I highly recommend his Desiring God series of teachings. Indeed, his whole website is entitled DesiringGod.org, right? However, if this single sermon is an accurate representation of his general theology in this particular area, then I cannot help but disagree with his application of these particular verses right, that we're, we're looking at, as if Yeshua were saying that his own new, quote-unquote, teachings, Yeshua's new teachings, have come to replace the old Jewish system of relating to God. Now, in all fairness, and I'm going to say this again as well, Pastor Piper, I think, was focusing just on the fasting aspect. So I don't know, I'd have to dig a little bit deeper. Um, that's why I'm trying to be very, very careful not to quote Pastor Piper out of context or make him say something that he's not really saying. And we don't have time in this commentary to review all of Pastor Piper's commentaries. Um, so we're, we're just going to kind of go with what we've got at the moment. Um, so uh, that's why I say in my commentary again, uh, and this is for all of you as well, I must stress that I do not disagree with Piper's concept of hungering and thirsting after the holiness of God. I mean, that is absolutely foundational. And this is why I think it's very careful, in my experience, as you are charting your way through your study of the Word of God, if you're someone who's inclined to um, follow after the Hebraic roots, or you're seeking to re-embrace the laws of Moses or the ancient paths or something like that, there's always this danger in the Messianic movement to treat standard, traditional, uh, garden-variety Christian theology as something that's inferior, as if you've arrived as this messianic, right? You've been shown this truth that that Sabbaths and kosher and, and the law of Moses and all that stuff is, is still relevant. And suddenly, your head swells with all this knowledge, and you, you get this idea that, I don't need to listen to, the, to those pastors anymore, because after all, they're they're antinomian, right? They think the law of Moses is done away with. How stupid can they be? What, what kind of... What kind of um, Nutrition can I gain from listening to them? This is a wrong-headed approach. Um, on the contrary, there's quite a bit of um, d- uh, depth of nutrition that's missing from many Messianic teachers these days. And so, for that reason, you've got to supplement all of your Torah commentaries, your Torah teachings, your, your searching after the Law of Moses, all this stuff. you got to supplement that with a healthy dose of Christian um, theology that is still rooted and grounded in the foundational truth, and Pastor Piper is going to fill in that um, uh, fill in that need there. I, I highly uh, suggest that you uh, put him on your on your YouTube playlist or whatever you do, um, and listen to his uh, uh, teachings. So I go on to say in my commentary, indeed. We must, with a capital M, we must pant after our Lord as if our very life depends on it. From point of fact, it does. Right? Listen to Pastor Piper's message. You're desiring God, right? Hungry and thirsting after God. You've got to be in that place or you're not going to be filled. And I can tell you right now, if you're gonna if you're looking for it in all of your messianic fancy teachings, right, unfortunately there's a lot lacking there. I'm so, I'm I'm really saddened to say that. I wish it wasn't that way, but the messianic movement is still quite young and is still quite messy, right? Those first few letters in the word messianic, messy. Yeah, it's quite messy. And so um it takes um co- uh content that's kind of well established. It's been um foundational for for decades and for centuries, uh you know, like standard Christian teachings. And so you've got to keep those um teachings in your uh in, in, in your for, in your forefront in the, in your mind uh, in your purview in your in your wallet in your on your playlist right uh, you got to keep them handy there otherwise you're gonna dry up you're gonna dry up um, in fact I, I close this um, paragraph with a quote from Acts for in him we live and move and exist of course that's Acts 17:28 and I think what I'll do is I'll stop right there for our uh, study in Matthew tonight uh, Judaism v Christianity we'll pick up um, looking at Pastor Piper's uh, message some more next week. We're not done with this uh, quote just yet. We've got two two more uh, paragraphs to to examine, and um, we're we're just looking at this parable of Yeshua's in Matthew nine fourteen through seventeen through the lens of different. 
pastors and commentaries to see what we can ascertain on their perspective and find out whether or not it's a perspective that's worth um, holding on to or if it needs to be maybe perhaps set uh, on the side of the table and compared with other perspectives. Okay, but that'll do it for um, Matthew 9, 14 through 17, Judaism v. Christianity. Thank you.